The center of Sevilla in Spain is one of the typically great European urban neighborhoods with a mix of residential and shopping, pedestrian lanes, neighborhood plazas, just a real people-friendly place. We are going to take you through it with several walks pointing out some of the major plazas and the lovely pedestrian lanes. Starting out at Plaza Nueva, the most popular place in town. This central area with the plaza and the streets leading to it is really the heart and focal point of the city. Notice the broad street that is for pedestrians, bicycles, no cars allowed, and the tram. Sevilla has a recently installed modern tram system that really is a great way to move people around. It's so easy for the tram to come right through the center of town this way. It's not disrupting the urban fabric in any way. It comes along nice and slowly in this central area with pedestrians and bicyclists sharing the space. And then it moves faster when it's out on the edge of town, bringing people to the suburbs and points beyond. Much less expensive than constructing a subway and much less disruptive than building an elevated train through the center of town. The street level tram is an ideal example of urban transportation at its best. Very easy to get on the tram. It's like getting on a bus. It's right at street level. This neighborhood along Constitution Avenue has been entirely transformed by the tram service because now there's no cars going by, you don't have that exhaust fumes and noise, and so there's a lot more room for people throughout. You've got the sidewalk restaurants, you've got people walking, strolling along, lounging, people watching, and the street is a major one that connects the cathedral with the city hall square and then beyond right into the pedestrian shopping zone where we'll be taking you next. Plaza Nueva is just one block over from the main pedestrian lane of town, which leads right into the shopping district. Calle Sierpes, lined with the best shopping and liveliest atmosphere, especially in the late afternoon when the locals are out enjoying their traditional stroll. Sierpes means Street of the Serpent, perhaps due to its wiggly route and extreme length. It goes for nearly a mile. And it's not just the one street, it's an entire shopping zone, a fabric of side lanes and parallel streets that make for the most important shopping area of the city. There are a lot of beautiful old buildings here with tiles on the walls in that typical Andalusian style. So you wanna be sure to look up a couple of floors to see the roof lines and the tiles up above and windows and balconies maybe some flower pots as you're walking along on these main shopping streets. The shops are open in the morning from 10 till 2 p.m. and then they close for siesta in that typical Spanish style and reopen again at 3 p.m. and stay open usually till 10 p.m. Anchoring the north end of this retail network at Plaza Duque de la Victoria is the city's largest department store, El Corte Inglés open throughout the afternoon. No siesta for the department stores. Occupying a city block with a beautiful plaza and fountain out front, they claim to have a half a million items for sale. Of course, the advantage of that department store is you can find everything under the one roof. Walk in the one door and you're bound to find almost everything for sale in the city. Although it's kind of more fun to go poke around in the little boutiques along the shopping lanes. Like many other European cities lately, Sevilla has been converting more and more of its downtown streets into pedestrian malls. Ironically, shop merchants throughout Europe resisted this kind of transformation from automobile access to pedestrian zone, thinking that it would kill their business because everybody was driving up to the shop. But they quickly realized that it was great for business. Many, many more people can walk by the shop than could ever drive by it previously. So it's been a big victory all around. The public especially has benefited from this new quality of urban life. The central zone is a big automobile-free shopping mall. 
and will be the most important part of town for many visitors. Two parallel shopping streets of Kuna and Tetuan flank Sierpes, connected by a pedestrian network of little side streets with no automobiles allowed. It's a good thing that these two parallel lanes and other cross lanes have developed because otherwise Sierpes would just be too crowded. As it is, on a busy day, you will be rubbing shoulders with quite a few locals. And it gets most busy on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, after 5 p.m. That's really when it's out in all its glory. Typical of most European cities, there are not many big shopping malls out on the outskirts in the suburbs of the city. And therefore, the central part of Sevilla here in the pedestrian zone is still the main place where people gather for shopping, eating, people watching, and just taking a walk. The city has put fabric canopies over many of these pedestrian lanes to shelter people from the sun. It does get kind of hot from May through September, but the canopies really help a lot by providing shade. San Eloy is another one of those pedestrian shopping streets that's perpendicular to Sierpes. Great neighborhood, and there's some little garden plazas that you can sit down and take a break at. Here's an example of one of the finest things in life, standing around with your friends, having a drink, having a conversation, and a beautiful outdoor plaza. We're in Plaza del Salvador, and we'll come back here in a little while in the evening to show you when it's really jumping. Notice they have stand-up tables that encourage energetic conversation and mingling with your friends. And now we're just going to wander a little bit, just kind of meander around, take a left, take a right, go down some attractive alleys, and we soon find ourselves at a magical little spot, Plaza San Lorenzo. This plaza is not really on any guidebooks as an important destination site that you must see, but it's just such a wonderful slice of life of Sevilla that we're going to spend some time here hanging out, especially now late in the afternoon. It's about five o'clock going on six o'clock. It's twilight time and the locals are out in force. This is an outdoor living room. You see the people are just sitting at the cafes. The kids are all around playing up a storm, having a great time with each other. There's a church on one side. There's cafes, there's pastry shops, there's restaurants and bars and snack bars and convenience stores. And then the apartments are all around within a few blocks. This is one of the great joys of city life where you have that urban density where enough people are living in a certain neighborhood that you can walk out, walk down to the corner plaza, the neighborhood plaza, see your friends, spend some time, do a little shopping, and then walk back home again. This is really strictly for the locals. And of course, throughout Sevilla, you have a number of these neighborhood centers, these little plazas. This is happening all over town. In the Middle Ages, Plaza del Salvador had been the Muslims' major square with the big mosque and the marketplace. It was replaced by Sevilla's second largest church and what is today one of the liveliest plazas in town, filled with young people in the evening having a great time. This plaza is right next to the major university in Sevilla and at night it really becomes a lively social gathering area. It's really a wonderful spot for the young people to get together. They can stand up and have a drink out in the public square. They can go into the restaurants or cafes if they like, or just sit around the edges on the steps of the church and enjoy the scene. It's like an ongoing party every night. Europe really excels at these places for people to gather, public places in the middle of town. It's a very casual, safe and friendly environment. Great place to meet somebody, great place to mingle. There's really nothing much like it in most American cities. 
but this is something really special to Europe and in particular to Spain and right here in the heart of Sevilla. It's really a marvelous scene and you're welcome to join in. Many of the young people speak English pretty well and if you'd like to join a conversation, well, go right ahead and see what you can contribute. Everybody will be the better for it. Even though it seems like Spaniards stay up all night, they keep very late hours, the travelers got to get some rest. And what better way to do that than in the fine hotel like the Melia Gran Colón, a five-star property of that big Spanish chain Melia, and they put on a typical large Spanish buffet breakfast. This is a great way to build up some energy for another big day. Breakfast is usually included with the price of your hotel room in Spain and generally throughout Europe. So that's all very convenient. You go right downstairs, have breakfast, back up to your room, get ready for the day. And in our case, we're traveling with a small group, so we have a chance to talk a little and swap some tales about what happened yesterday. The hotel is nicely located in the center of the downtown commercial area just a few blocks south of Corte Inglés, the big department store. And it's a charming little neighborhood. There's narrow streets, there's sidewalk cafes nearby, and puts us in good position for starting another walking tour of Sevilla. This morning, we'll take a stroll through more of the pedestrian shopping streets and over to a big plaza, Alameda de Hercules, and then on to have a look at the old wall that still surrounds part of the city. Once again into the lovely pedestrian zone in central Sevilla, this time along Amor de Dios, a narrow lane with shops that have a nice variety of goods. And the street is really an extension of Sierpes, the main pedestrian lane that goes through the heart of town. This is a neighborhood that we're entering now that 20 years ago was really not such a desirable part of town, but there's been a lot of efforts now to clean it up and make it a very pedestrian friendly region. Walk a few blocks west to Alameda de Hercules, a narrow tree shaded park that has recently bounced back from being a seedy red light district to becoming one of the trendy hotspots of town with ultra hip boutiques and yuppie cafes. You'll see families out here enjoying their time together in the open air and notice the landscaping and the paving, the lovely contours that they've put into the paved brick plaza. It really breaks up this major space and makes it far more interesting experience. You'll see there's just a narrow lane for automobiles to go through here. so. There is some access for motor vehicles, but not much. This is a place for people, for pedestrians, for bicycles. Sevilla is a major bicycling town. There's a large number of dedicated bikeways exclusive for the bicycles. They also have one of these very popular bicycle rental systems that you're finding more and more now throughout Europe. It is a garden plaza that was built in 1574, which makes it, according to Wikipedia, the oldest public garden in Spain and in Europe. This beautiful plaza that we see today has a very long history, starting out as a riverbed, then a swamp, and then reclaimed as a upper-class gathering place, falling later into disrepute as a spot for drugs and whores, and now reborn as one of the finest and safest friendly gathering places in town. Sometimes it would get so flooded that people crossed the square on boats back in the 16th and 17th centuries. And then public redevelopment funded by the city council totally renewed La Alameda between 2006 and 2008. The road traffic was limited and a number of kiosks, benches and fountains were installed. And now it's one of the main social gathering centers and nightlife hotspots of the city. Quite naturally, there's been a positive spillover effect into the nearby blocks, which have been transformed into a very desirable place to live. There's shops, neighborhood restaurants, bars and cafes, and they're really taking very good care of these old buildings here. The city is showing a lot of pride in the historic renovations that have been happening throughout. 
We've reached the west end of the old town and even here you'll find some more pedestrian lanes. And then there's a mix of traffic. There's some residential streets here with some affordable apartments right within the old town. It's a very desirable neighborhood in which to live. You've got the urban conveniences and yet it's rather quiet and affordable. And finally, we reach the ancient wall and the Macarena Gate. This is part of a fortification that at one time went around the entire old town. The origins ultimately went back to Roman days and it was built up over the Gothic and Islamic periods and Castilian and it survived right up through the 19th century with the Macarena to Cordoba Gate section beautifully restored. We have got more movies about Sevilla and other parts of Spain on our YouTube channel, where you'll also find a thousand movies about Europe and some other parts of the world. If you're enjoying the program, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you'll be notified about all of the new movies that we're regularly uploading.